All right, if you need a little refresher on anatomical planes, just click up here. If not, let's get into the planes of motion. So as three dimensional creatures, we obviously move through three different dimensions or planes, and those planes have specific names such as frontal, sagittal, and transverse. And once we understand the planes, we can describe motion a little bit better. We can understand how people move and kinesiology a little bit better. So they are important to know. So really the key to understanding the planes of motion is to understand the axes of rotation. So the same way a globe revolves around its axis or the way a tire revolves around an axle, your joints revolve around imaginary axes of rotation depending on how they're moving. And these axes are always 90 degrees perpendicular to the plane involved. And if you understand and remember the perpendicular part, it all becomes a lot easier. So let's get into a few examples and how to remember all this stuff real easy going forward. All right, so let's start off with the frontal plane. So if you're moving in the frontal plane, you're revolving around what is referred to as the sagittal axis. And I know these names can be kind of tricky, especially with the axis, but you can remember the location of the plane and which way these axes run just by looking at the first letter of each of these different plane names. So for example, the F in frontal reminds us that the plane divides the body from front to back, but it also reminds us is that the axis that intersects the frontal plane also runs front to back. So just look at that F and then remember the plane front to back and the axis front to back. Now, if we use this stick as kind of an axis and we put it through the humeral head here, we can see what kind of motions we'll get out of the frontal plane at the shoulder. So that would be abduction and adduction. Obviously there's no other motions that can kind of go around this particular axis. Other motions include lateral flexion of the spine and ankle eversion and inversion. For the sagittal plane, the S reminds us that the plane divides the body side to side and the frontal axis that runs through it also runs side to side. So if we take a look here with the axis running side to side through the glenohumeral joint, what kind of motions can we get in the sagittal plane at the shoulder? So we get extension revolving around this axis and flexion. And so the same is true for the hip ankle and the knee flexion and extension are all the main movements of the sagittal plane. Now for the transverse plane, the T reminds us that the plane divides the body from top to bottom and its axis also called the longitudinal axis also runs top to bottom. So what kind of motions would we get out of the glenohumeral joint with the axis that runs top to bottom? Well, we get internal rotation and external rotation. If we're up here, We'd also get horizontal abduction and horizontal adduction, all done in the transverse plane. Other motions include spinal rotation and of course, internal external rotation of the hip. All right, so let's simplify things even further. So usually on a test, they'll give you an exercise and then ask you what plane the exercise is being performed in. And it can get kind of complicated if the exercise is, you know, you're on your back or on your stomach and it's just kind of throwing you off from what you're usually, you know, uh, used to. So that can get kind of tricky. So the method I use makes things real easy no matter what position the patient is in. So the first step is to pick out and identify the main joint that's being worked. All right, so that's the first step. The second step is to take your finger and then imagine it's an axis of rotation and go from plane to plane to plane and checking to see which one is actually working, which is the right plane. All right, so let's pretend we're doing push-ups, okay? So this is the push-up motion. Obviously, if I was on the ground, this would be the push-up motion, or it could be, you know, like a fly. So let's go step by step. All right, so we know the frontal plane, the axis runs front to back. So we take our finger and pretend it's an imaginary axis, and we stick it right in the joint we think we're working the most. So obviously the shoulder is the one that's being worked the most for a push-up or a fly. So we use our finger here, and we imagine this uh, axis going from front to back and we think about is this the right motion for this axis not really obviously it's totally wrong so the right motion for this axis would be abduction adduction all right so it's definitely not frontal plane so let's go to the sagittal plane and try to remember and remember it's the sagittal plane uh, the axis runs from side to side so if we imagine it going from our elbow all the way through our shoulder and out the other shoulder is this the right axis for this push-up motion no, okay, so this would be the kind of motion you get. Let's try the transverse plane, and we know the axis for that one runs top to bottom, using that T to remind us top to bottom. So let's use our finger here. The axis is running top to bottom, and that's performing push-up, that's it. All right, so that's, that's how things would rotate around that specific axis. So that is the key. You just take your finger and you go from plane to plane to plane um, until you figure out the right one. And it, you know it's a little tricky in class if you're 
pointing at yourself in the middle of a test, but you can just use your imagination too. But using your finger to start off with will help you cement this idea together. So what I'll do is I'll put up a list of exercises and the planes they're performed in, and you can try this out a few times for yourself. Make sure you get a few right answers. And from there, you're basically good to go. All right, that covers the planes of motion. I hope it helped you out. If you need some good luck vibes for your next test, just drop me a comment below and I'll always hit you back. As always, thanks for watching. And of course, good luck on your next test.